Okay, uh, hello everyone, uh, Hugh Sai here. This, um, video is about me. I just want to say this. So this video is about, um, me picking up my, or picking up weeds that have, uh, grown in my, uh, yard and pick up pine cones to make it easier to mow the lawn. And, um, that's essentially what this video was going to be about. I mean, I still do it in the video, but, uh, I also go on a rant or a rave basically about a uh, analysis, you could say, about uh, Metal Gear Solid, uh, the series, and the franchise, right? About each game, uh, the theme of each game, they're not, they're not necessarily in-depth, it's just me kind of talking, right? But, you know, that's technically what I do in the video, so I just want to make that clear, and I will be getting, you know, distracted. Uh, you know, because I'm still multitasking. But, yeah, that's essentially what I am doing throughout the entire video. So, I hope that you guys enjoy. And, he saw in, I guess, since this is the intro. But, yeah. So, he saw in. Hello, everyone. Uh, he saw here. And today, I will be... Sorry, just that stuff. And today I will be uh, picking up pine cones and picking out the weeds in my uh, yard. So let's get started. Our uh, first one here. <clears throat> you know, uh, pretty nice, pretty nice, you know. Things that uh, really do grow fast once the winter is over. Yeah. Nice, kind of nice. But yeah, so I'm kind of doing this because uh, my father, you know, he uh, brought to my attention that you know, we have a whole bunch of uh, weeds growing out. So I don't know if you're uh, picking them up. And once I'm done with all of them, I'm gonna throw them over there. Yeah. You gotta be careful with it, because you always have to pick them up by the roots. That way it doesn't damage the grass that much. And what I'm looking for is for um, ones like these. You know, my actual like long roots, and like tiny grass. So you see here, that's the thing right there, that purple thing. That's where it is. You gotta just pluck it out. And these things here as well. I think it's the rest of the But I also gotta remember to also pick up the pine cones. Ooh, it's a lot of dirt. But yeah, I also gotta remember to pick up the pine cones as well. And there is a lot of pine cones scattered around. Hmm. Alright, so right now I'm just gonna go pick up the weeds. I'm just uh, going to go pick up the weeds from uh, the yard, and then uh, it should be done. Or, well, not should be done. I mean, I am then going to then focus on the uh, the pine cones. Getting like my shower fix is still still trying to get renovated. He removed a uh, part of the fence here. And I'm not sure why. My dad told me about it, I'm not sure why. But 
fish just kind of gone. He's gonna fix it. He's gonna fix it. Right now, I just gotta worry about the roots growing. That one right there. Almost missed it. Almost missed it. Maybe I'll collect some pine cones. You know, while I'm just walking here. I mean, yeah, uh, this video isn't really going to be much, or saying much, pretty much. It's just me plucking some weeds. is a prime example of a weed. See? It's a pretty little flower. So nice. So nice. I don't think that has bloomed yet, but you can see uh, the cobwebs, the spider webs. Unfortunately, we're going to have to remove you. Right. Look at the roots on this one. Sorry. And this right here is, you know, the burn pit. Haven't really used it in a while. days ago, so it might be damp, but I think it should be good. It should be, it should be. Just a little uh, leaf growing. You don't leave that one here. It's not really the same thing, buddy. And there's a lot growing here on this side, especially that grass. Like you can tell, like when you look from here, right? And you just see like this abundance of grass and leaves growing here. That is not a good thing. You know, I think we all understand why. I'm also looking this one here. But yeah. Uh, as you can see here, this is where uh, my dog, my late dog Brownie, was buried. So you can see why there's so much grass. Or it makes sense. I mean, that was a few years ago, right? And mowing the lawns and stuff. Kind of, you know. But. You know, he was buried here. So, of course, you know, decompose, decomposing and stuff like that, he's gonna be like a whole bunch of more greenery there, right? But there shouldn't. Sorry. But there shouldn't be any greenery over, or as much greenery over here, though. Which probably means that something either, you know, died over here or maybe it's just the cats and they're like you know um their feces 
over here or something. That's probably the most likely one. But I guess while I'm here, I guess I should probably talk about a uh, few things of the uh, channel and as uh, such. Well, look at this. I think it's even. I don't think it's self. It's. Yeah, it's this. Coming all the way from out here. Yeah, that thing's stuck in there. I was saying, I guess I should kind of talk about uh, some of the channel. Or what I'm trying to do with the channel. And uh, things like that. So, let's see. I still have the Metal Gear Solid collection. Or the Master Collection, or whatever it's called. I still love that. Right. Um, let's see. I mean, Metal Gear Solid 1. I recorded that. And right now I'm in the process of Metal Gear Solid 2. Uh, I haven't done anything with Metal Gear Solid 2 ever since the last video. And I want to complete that. Because I know, if I remember correctly, we're like half reading. If my memory serves me correct. Because at the moment we are like at the part where you actually try to find um, what's his name? Excuse me. But we actually try to find um, you know the guy, the guy. Uh, Arrears. Arrears. I believe his name is. But yeah. And. Uh, I forgot how long the game was. But the game itself is pretty long. And as of that, then we can finally move on to Metal Gear Solid 3. I don't know. Oh, wait, no, the second one. They were going together. But yeah. So after that, then uh, we have Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. That one is probably going to be a really fun one to play. Especially since, you know, Metal Gear Solid 3 has the camo index, uh, things, right? And that's kind of the thing I always liked about it. Many people said for, like, Metal Gear Solid 3, well, like, the camera, like, I mean, the, cam the camouflage, the camo index, right? And, uh, stuff like that. Flies. But, uh... Yeah, the camo index, you know, having to like do surgery on yourself, find the uh, right spots for it. What else was it? What else was it? Uh, I had the feet, the, the eating system as well. Many people, I don't know, they just said how it was just really tedious doing stuff like that. I, I think I kind of understand, you know, having to like do your makeup. That's essentially what it is. Doing your makeup. Uh, I'm always putting like a shirt and pants and stuff. I understand why some people... Yeah, I might just leave this one here too. It's nice, I think it's pretty good for you. Oh, this one's still I do on it. But yeah. So, you know, people were just saying how all that stuff was pretty tedious. Made the game boring, less fun, I don't know. Me personally, I kind of like it. I mean, it's nice, it's nice. There's not really much of the, uh, a problem in the gameplay. Unnecessarily, that's kind of what makes Sneak Eater so fun, because Metal Gear, Metal Gear 2, it was basically just pixels, it was on the MS, it was on the MSX console, right, so you won't really have to worry about all that stuff, 
I mean, Metal Gear wasn't really that, you know, when you look at it back now, it wasn't really that advanced. But Metal Gear Solid 2, it was greatly, like, wow, like, greatly improved. And you can see how Metal Gear 2, uh, Solid Snake, like, kind of had the rest of the stuff in there, right? Because, like, many games, I don't know many games, but Metal Gear Solid and Metal Gear Solid 2, Sons of Liberty, like, they used, like, a whole bunch of things, or made a whole bunch of references to, like, Metal Gear 2 itself, you know? It was just nice, it was just nice. So, uh, let's see here. And Metal Gear Solid 1, because of both Metal Gear Solid and Metal Gear Solid 2, you were just wearing the sneaking suit, you know, so you didn't even have to, like, worry about, like, camouflage and stuff. Because, you know, it's a sneaking suit. Sorry about that. Yeah. But, yeah, it's a sneaking suit, you know, so, you know, it improves your sneaking and stuff like that. But then when Metal Gear Solid 3 came around, and it kind of... How do I say this? Each Metal Gear game kind of made it more in-depth to how you were going to actually be stealthy or stealth, stealthy, stealthy, and sneak around, essentially, right? That's pretty much how every Metal Gear game was, you know? Oh, uh, let's see, let's see. Metal Gear, right, the first one, the original one, it, wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. I got, I'm getting lost. I need to do the phone talking. But yeah. So, Metal Gear Solid, I mean, not Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear, like the first one back in the 1980s, um, you know, it was originally supposed to be like a war game, you know, but due to the limitations, only a few enemies at a time could appear, which then made, uh, you know, Kojima, the guy who was behind Metal Gear, you know, who was considered to be the father of Metal Gear, then decided, you know, he was just going to make it like a stealth game, right? And what he did. So that was uh, pretty nice, you know, for that time, it was pretty nice, pretty nice. Then he made Metal Gear Solid 2. And Metal Gear Solid 2 was a bit more in-depth with the sneaking. Look, uh, let's say you could actually, you know, go prone, you could crawl, right? Uh, certain sounds could actually alert the enemies, the guards, and you had to, like, do something, you know, with that. What else? Hmm. Oh yeah, knocking as well, you know. Like, a, if you punched the wall, so that would make noise that would alert uh, the guards to it. And it was pretty nice, it was pretty nice. Uh, sorry. Still getting a bit uh, sidetracked. Yeah. That's what uh, was so uh, nice about it. You know? It was just... Uh, like, like, it really did. Especially during that time, when it, there wasn't really that many stealth games out there. It really was kind of... You know, during that time. Uh, you know... How did I say? Revolutionary, right? And then Metal Gear Solid came out. And there was just so many things to it, and many things that people liked about it. Uh, one, still the stealth of it, you know, how... You could, like, do stuff, you could crawl behind walls, the story. That's the one thing that many people like. About... Oh, well, that's the story. More of the theme of the game, you know, the morals. People say how the story of Metal Gear Solid, like, all the way to where it all begins in Metal Gear Solid 3, 
and where it ends and to mold your solid for. People say that it's just like a whole entire roller coaster of like confusing stuff. And there's also retcons as well in the game. You can say that like mold your solid to five, mold your solid to four. You know, the newer releases. Things like that happen. Hey, but hey, it's natural, it's natural, it's natural. But yeah, it's more of the themes behind each game that many people like about this. Because Metal Gear Solid 1, oh, let's see, Metal Gear, let's start from the very beginning, Metal Gear, like the first one, it wasn't really, there wasn't much to it, you know, the story itself was kind of, I don't know, kind of like a Hollywood film, because that's what it was, uh, Hollywood, um, Metal Gear Solid 2, it really brought out more of war is bad, you know. War is bad, that's pretty much a summary of it. War is bad. But then, Metal Gear 1, it brought back the sentiment of how war is, you know, not really a good thing, but it also kind of brought into something more. It's about how we choose to live and how our lives aren't decided for us necessarily they're not for me chosen for us to live out our lives are what we choose for it to be you know uh, for example genes the entire and sorry for spoilers if you're not familiar with this but the entire point of why Liquid did what he did was essentially this genes, you know. He thought that he was the inferior clone of Big Boss, and he thought that, you know, Solid Snake was the more superior one, when instead it was just the actual, the opposite way, the opposite way around, right? Yeah, yeah, but it was actually the opposite way around with Liquid actually, you know, him being the more superior clone. But since he never do that, or he never knew that, he, uh, he just never got past it, you know? So he saw, set out his entire life to get revenge on his father, his brother, and he died for it. And the ending cutscene of it as well is just beautiful. Really? Like, this is a masterpiece, that game is. Th that's what the game is. Metal Gear Solid 1, and I'm pretty sure many other Metal Gear games are just masterpieces. You know? The story, the music, the best is not yet to come. How it was played. And sure, sure, many people complain about the dialogue being too long. I actually myself complain about it being too long because, like, I'm pretty sure my phone kind of cut off during, like, Otacon's, um, cutscene where he was talking about how his family has a curse with nuclear weaponry and such. But it was still beautiful. It was still beautiful. And yeah, that's kind of Metal Gear Solid, you know, our lives aren't made, or our lives aren't chosen for us, we decide how we get to live. And Metal Gear Solid 2 came, and Metal Gear Solid 2, you know, I'm so excited if I know I want to know. Basically, the ending of it, or the near ending of it, when you find out that the people who you were talking to weren't even real. They were actually just like AI, right? And once again, spoilers if you don't know this. 
Uh, basically, it was about how information or misinformation and censorship of information comes across the internet. And sure, sure, this may not be much of a shocker now, but you gotta remember that this game, uh, Metal Gear Solid 2, came out in 2001. Yeah, 2001 it came out. And that's when the internet itself was becoming more popular. People were getting computers and stuff, you know, like the internet was really just blowing up, you know, during that time, right? And then Metal Gear Solid 2 uh, it talks about how information on the internet, misinformation, how people uh, spread false lies, uh, stuff like that, right? It's, it was very ahead of its time with it, right? As many people say, and actually there's a YouTube video that goes into great detail about that scene, that specific scene in it, called um, the most prolific moment in gaming history. Because it kind of is, right? You figure out that basically everything that you were doing in the game was essentially a lie. And the gameplay itself kind of represents that with first, uh, Back in 2001, you know, when the game was getting advertised, you know, trailers, stuff like that, uh, everyone thought that you are going to play as Soul Snake because that's who you only played as in all Metal Gear games that came out at that time. Um, Metal Gear, Metal Gear 2, Metal Gear Solid, and a little bit of Metal Gear Solid 2 in the, you know, beginning scene of it. You only ever played as Soul Snake. But then when you found out that you were playing as someone completely different, a newbie, a rookie, right? It was then like, what? We're not playing as the legendary soul snake? And stuff like that. And people were mad, you know? That's actually why many people actually hated uh, Raiden, because, you know, he wasn't solid. The people were lied to, but at the same time, I think people were missing a point, you know? If they actually finish the game, then I'm pretty sure that was the entire point. The entire game itself is a lie. And I actually think, as I once heard someone say, Raiden in Metal Gear 2 Solid, I mean, in Metal Gear Solid 2 at least, is basically supposed to represent us, you know? He is supposed to represent the player. Because Raiden was a, like, what? He was a rookie in the field, right? He was a new uh, Foxhound member. Not Foxhound, but a Fox member. I was a Foxhound. I, I forgot. But, he, you know, he was a new member in the Special Forces, right? Uh, he was a child soldier. Uh, we know about that. But, yeah. That time being, like, a legend in the field, especially since that mission was like his first actual mission, right? That's kind of what he wanted to become, the legendary Solid Snake. That's what who we wanted to become. We wanted to be, or at least the players wanted to be like the legendary Solid Snake. That's uh, pretty much what it was, right? Or what many players during that time wanted to be. Raiden was essentially an allegory for the players, for us, the players. And yeah, yeah, that was, the game is also a masterpiece, by the way. Also another absolute banger, you know? I also just want to make a quick note right here, right? How, uh, you know, a lot of people, a lot of people are, you know, Kojima fans, of course. You know, since he created the Metal Gear series, he also created other stuff, like, uh, Police, Police Knots, right? And, uh, many other different games that he worked on. 
And Richard, he also worked on uh, the Castlevania series because, you know, he was an employee of uh, Konami. But what I'm saying here is, you know, you also gotta thank the people besides Hiyo Kojima, right? Because I'm pretty sure Hiyo Kojima isn't like the only person, you know, who worked on the games himself. So she sends most of the staff, right? Because how do I say? Hiyo himself, right? Sure, he was kind of behind it, you know, he was the founder of it. But at the same time, he is still, as someone said, a silly man. So he's going to make some silly decisions with gameplay and stuff. And I'm pretty sure there were uh, staff who, like, you know, stopped them from playing the things that he originally wanted in the game. Or else the game was just going to get crazy, so you know. We got to think every person who was behind it, you know, every person who helped from game design, to storytelling, to all that stuff, you know? It's not a one-man game, no. People were still behind it, you know? So, thank those people as well. Three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. And uh, nine. Ten. Oh, I meant. Oh, well. But yeah. Uh, so, playing that side, time to talk about Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. Now, many people consider this game one of the best. For the same reasons why many people disliked it. One, uh, camo index. Basically gameplay, essentially, you know. Um, there are some releases, because, you know, you have the American release, and you have, like, the European release. I'm pretty sure, like, the Japanese one, actually, like, in, like, East Asia, or released in East Asia, uh, there are many different releases to it. I think, but I'm pretty sure it was just Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater and Metal Gear Solid 3 Subsistence. That's pretty much what it was, I believe. And uh, I'm pretty sure for the American version, it was very different from the other two games because Metal Gear, Metal Gear 2, Metal Gear Solid, and Metal Gear Solid 2, they all had. Um, something in common, and that was the grid angle, you know, uh, basically fixed camera angles, let's just call it. Metal Gear and Metal Gear 2 had, like, um, I, don't, I, I actually don't remember, sorry, I actually don't remember if Metal Gear actually had a grid system to it, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was just, like, top down, go to room to room, and you just have to remember what room you're heading to. But Metal Gear Solid 2, I know definitely it had the grill system. I'm pretty sure that's the first one that had like the radar grid, right? Like you could see where enemies were going to, you know, things like that. And that's what uh, Metal Gear Solid 1 also did through the main wing, aka one of the best characters. But also um, in Metal Gear Solid 2 as well. With uh, a red and stick and stick. And so it was kind of a bit different for Ryan because you actually needed to head over to the nodes, and the nodes kind of gave you like the entire like um, surveillance for like the area. But you know, uh, if you find it, you know you find it. And it's fun, it's fun, it's fun. Like, don't get me wrong. It's fun having to traverse the area, and also it is a bit more impactful that way, you know? Because some people are like, you know, me and myself, you know, a lot of people just kind of rely on the grid system because it just pinpointed to you where, like, every enemy was, right? But, um, 
the fact that you had to actually transverse the area to actually get to the node was like very it's very intense when you don't know where your enemies are especially since if you get spotted and they run away well let's see in Metal Gear Solid 1 you know it was always on so like as soon as you got spotted then you know it was just like like go kind of, like you know the um exclamation point you know it would just go down and then alert would like already start and then you had to run hide uh all that stuff but Metal Gear Solid 2 you know the enemies actually had to like call for backup and stuff for that to work so you know if you were quick enough to uh get your enemy before you know they call for backup and you would have been fine and uh, such But yeah, so I was saying back to Metal Gear Solid 3, right? You didn't have a radar system. It was, depending on what version you played, right? I'm pretty sure in the Western version, which is just Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, it was just a uh, third person, you know, like kind of like this. Like imagine, imagine this is a snake, right? And you know, you look around, you know, move but in um i'm pretty sure this assistance version it actually had or went back to the fixed camera angle if i'm correct so you know you walk in a room and then you switch sides you keep moving and you switch sides and you keep moving and you switch sides and you keep like like something like that yeah but once again i'm pretty sure it didn't even have a radar system because that wouldn't really make sense in the time period and time period that existed in because Mortal Kombat 3 took place in like 1964. So yeah, that was pretty much a reason why it wouldn't make sense to have a radar or sonar as they uh, call it. That was bad. That made it in. But yeah. Forward. Oh, that was in. That was in. I didn't even look at it. I was looking at the camera the entire time. To make sure the thing was like in there. But I was oh okay, sorry, sorry. I can't I can't even side try to Wait, can you see like how much we have in there? But yeah. So that didn't have a radar system and the theme behind Metal Gear Solid 3 was kinda once again No 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 it wasn't even about war. It was mainly about uh, patriotism and nationalism for a country, you know, because, uh, sorry for spoilers once again, the boss, who was, a uh, Snake's mentor, right, and you can also say a mother figure, um, she was essentially, you know, like his mentor, mother figure, like I said, you know, but then she defects to Russia, right? And now she's working with like the Cobra unit. And the Cobra unit is or like the people who ended like World War II, so they're like, you know, highly proficient and stuff like that. That's not the point. The point is, the point is, basically she defects to the West. I mean to, you know, the East, technically. You know, because West versus East. Yeah. So she's effects to the east, and uh, you know they threaten nuclear terror. So Snake gets sent in there to find the weapon of mass destruction and take it down. And as he does that, you know he goes through like her cover unit, um, all that stuff, and you know he kills her. But as we found out, or as we find out basically the boss was used as a pawn of 
the governments as a way to kind of like ease tensions, you know, between West and East to prevent nuclear terror between, you know, the two superpowers, you know, uh, the Soviet Union and like the others, you know, it, it makes sense, it makes sense. My mind is a bit blank right now. But yeah, basically, essentially, she was used as a way to kind of just make the U.S. look good, essentially, during that time period. And that's why, or that's how Snake became Big Boss, essentially, you know, and that's kind of shows how he goes or how he operates in the later years and kind of explains why he became the man that he became just look at it right there web web spider web spider web lost spider web but yeah so basically basically um after Mel Gear Solid 3 is then Mel Gear Solid 4 which many people say that it is possibly the worst right and there's a reason why it's like that it's because okay let me just uh, sit down here for a minute and kind of explain to you because this is getting pretty serious now so Mel Gear Solid um Mel Gear Solid 4 was supposed to be the very last Mel Gear Solid 4 actually no I mean, what I'm saying is Mel Gear Solid Three. Snake Eater was supposed to be the last of the last. You know, it was supposed to be the very last Metal Gear. But then fans wanted more Metal Gear. And because fans wanted more Metal Gear, you know, that then forced, you know, Hiro Kojima to make Metal Gear Solid 4 which was supposed to be the very last Metal Gear. And because of that, uh, many people just didn't like it. You know, it was very controversial. Um, people made, that's when the jokes came like, uh, there was a game in my movie uh, it came from, you know, because Metal Gear Solid 4 had a whole bunch of cutscenes, like a whole, whole bunch of cutscenes. And you can see the cutscenes, you know, each uh, code I call, each cutscene, all that stuff, the length, and like each game, but it weren't that bad. But Metal Gear Solid 4, Metal Gear Solid 4 has an entire, like, if I remember correctly, Metal Gear Solid 4 was known to have, like, the longest cutscene, um, in like all of gaming, with like an hour and 40 minutes cutscene at like the epilogue and many people were like absolutely like shocked haywire like I remember seeing someone uh, post about someone who were playing Metal Gear Solid 4 right and they just wanted to get to a point where you know they could stop because they were playing it at like one o'clock, right? Like a.m. in the morning on like a school night. So he wanted to like get to a stopping point, but he ended up like beating the game, right? And um, he had to endure an entire hour and 40 minute cutscene. So like by the time he was done, like fully done with the game, it was like drag luck. It, it's crazy, it's crazy. And you know, I myself, I myself, I can't remember much of it, right? Of course, we're gonna 
we're hopefully we're gonna get it in like the vol two of the master collection because you know uh Metal Gear Solid 4 if you don't know is only legally allowed on the PlayStation 3. And you know a lot of people are like shocked about that. But hopefully it's gonna be brought on newer consoles with the volume uh two release. But yeah, essentially uh Metal Gear Solid 4 was used once again it was used as a way to wrap up all of like everybody's um conclusion right uh snake's conclusion solid snake who is actually old snake in this one but yeah that doesn't matter uh meryl otacon and all the other characters who we've seen and like metal gear solid 2 and metal gear solid 1 you know it wraps up like their entire story and that's basically what it was supposed to be you know and it ended, but me myself, right, based on the stuff I re can remember from it, I gotta say, it is also a very good Metal Gear game. Now, sure, it has its flaws. It does have its flaws, right? With pacing, you know, more retcons, more kind of crazy stuff to it, but it's still a Metal Gear game, I gotta say. And it was a also amazing one as well. So you know, I liked it. I liked it. But then, in twenty twenty twenty, it was in twenty fourteen. Was after it was twenty fifteen. Twenty fifteen. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Twenty fifteen was when No Gear Solid Five came out. Or, yeah, Metal Gear Solid 5 came out. And... Metal Gear Solid 5 was a rocky, rocky start. Right? Um, how do I, how do I explain? How do I explain? So basically, Metal Gear Solid 5 was made during a time when, and if you don't know about the Hideo and Konami conflict, basically um, it's been said that Konami has treated Hideo along with their other employees as complete garbage, right? Which caused like a whole bunch of outbursts between both Hideo and Konami and stuff like that, right? But, you know, that was made during this time. And people were excited about this when Metal Gear Solid Five Ground Zeroes released, and when that released, how do I say? A lot of people liked it, right? Until they actually beat the game, because the game was about like an hour long. That's how long the game was, and people paid about thirty dollars. This was thirty dollars on release, thirty dollars on release for it. So people were mad because people were basically saying that they just played like a tech demo. Or like a demo for the game itself, but fortunately, Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain was released, right? And you know, it was actually like the full, like the full game after that, you know, flies, and it was the full game after that, you know, and that was also $30 on release, so that would kind of equate to about $60, which is the price of a full fledged game like back then, you know. Because now we're getting to seventy dollar territory with games now being like ninety dollars. It's just <sighs> inflation, inflation. But yeah, um, that released, and now people were kind of saying how. How do I say? The entire thing with Metal Gear Solid Five is just like an entire wacky, wacky, wacky thing, right? Because there was many more retcons to it, many more um, confusing details in the story that conflicts with other stories, once again, retcons and all that stuff. The entire plot twist of the thing, which, once again, as major spoilers, uh, Big Boss being a body double, a clone, and you didn't actually kill Big Boss himself, like in Metal Gear. 
that was actually Venom Snake. And it was just all very, very confusing stuff. You know, very confusing, very confusing. So that's why many people didn't really like it as well. But many people do like the gameplay of it. They really did like the gameplay, you know, of the game, you know, of Metal Gear itself. And I gotta say, I gotta be honest, I haven't played Metal Gear Solid 5. Like, I have not played uh, Metal Gear Solid 5. That's pretty much the only game I haven't played, I think. Uh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. It's hard remembering. But Metal Gear Solid 5 itself has its controversy, even to this day, because people say that Metal Gear Solid 5 isn't actually finished. Because in the game, there are two chapters. And it was said that there was supposed to be a dirt chapter, but due to over budget with Kojima and the conflict between Kojima and Konami, the game never got finished and was just released like that. But I gotta say, based on what I've seen from videos of it, for a game that is unfinished, it really does look mighty good. It's a good game. At least what I can say. I also almost forgot between Metal Gear Solid 4 and Metal Gear Solid 5, there's also many other things, such as Metal Gear Solid uh, Portable Ops, 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 which was basically or essentially a spin off, right? And that kind of showed what Big Boss uh, did. This was also, once again, after Metal Gear Solid 4, which kind of released or revealed that Big Boss was actually still alive this entire time. Uh, that's hard to explain because he was reincarnated after he was killed in Metal Gear. It, it, it's crazy. But basically, it kind of shows uh, Big Boss when he was still in Foxtown. But then another main, a mainline story game, which was said to be, once again, the final Metal Gear, Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, right? That showed Big Boss when he departed from Foxhound and he decided to become a mercenary, right? Uh, this also ties into the plots and the entire story of like his actions at Metal Gear Solid 3, where he thought that, you know, soldiers were supposed to be soldiers and he wanted to create a place where soldiers will also be or will always be, right? And this was known as the boss as well, uh, which was he greatly misunderstood and uh, it's crazy, it's crazy, it's crazy. You, you have to play the game for yourself, right? Because, like, it's really hard to explain, especially since this video is, like, 51 minutes. I don't even think I'm done. But, yeah, like, it's 51 minutes of me just talking about Metal Gear trying to grow up my weeds. It's, it's crazy, it's crazy. Oh, we have more stuff here. But, yeah. Um, Metal Gear, basically, is a crazy game, right? A crazy game series. Very wacky, very wacky. I can say and can confirm, right? The game itself is, I'm telling you once again, I don't think that there really is a bad Metal Gear game except for like Metal Gear Survive. But there isn't, like in the mainline games, I wouldn't say that there is a bad Metal Gear game. Sure. It may be a bit difficult to find things, right? It may be a bit difficult for stuff like that, but it's not, but it's not that hard. It's not that hard. You can, you can find it. You can find it, you know? Uh, every Metal Gear game, right, still, it's still flawed, but I would say that it's still good video games. They're good video games. The story of it, I just like it, right? It's a great story, and Metal Gear entire... Playing Metal Gear itself isn't an experience in itself, right? So, if you don't want to play it, that's fine. That's perfectly fine, you know, and uh, things like that, but it's still a great game, and still a game in itself, right? That's essentially what I wanted to say.
was a dog there. That was a dog. But, um... Now, what, what do I want to say now? What do I want to say? What do I want to say? Um... I think I'll read it out myself. Yeah. Looks a lot clearer. Looks a lot clearer. Yeah, essentially, Metal Gear Solid 5, I mean, Metal Gear, the entire Metal Gear series in itself is a great franchise that, you know, if you have the time to play it, it's long. I'm telling you, it is long. It is long, you know, but it is a great game that should at least... We try it out, you know. I understand that it's not going to be for everyone because it's not made for everyone, you know. But it is, I would say, a great experience and game to go through and experience. So, therefore, in my research, in my research, all right. Dang, I don't even know what I'm doing. I don't even know what I'm doing this myself. I was kind of just blabbering on. Yeah. Metal Gear Solid is a game that should be experienced. I would say. And that kind of wraps up my entire thing about Metal Gear. Nice neighbors, nice neighbors. Man. Yeah. That's uh, pretty much my entire way on that. And I'm still trying to Alright, that's what enough. But I'm still trying to um But yeah, that's uh, pretty much explains like the entire thing with um, Metal Gear. And now, uh, but yeah, that's essentially uh, Metal Gear Solid. You know, that wraps up what I want to say about it. And on uh, what I'm gonna do, right, there's still like this one video I wanna make about overconsumption and stuff. And I still want to beat Metal Gear. Like, I want to get to that. And there's also an air game I want to play. Right? It's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. But there's this game called Disco Asylum. And I would kind of like to play that on the channel. I know. And if I don't, then I don't. But. It's still a good game. Right? So, yeah, I mean, I've not done a good job at it, you know, due to my uh, blabbering, but the yard does look clearer, you know, so yeah, um, that was basically Metal Gear, my Metal Gear uh, rave or rant on the series, you know, my explanation on the series, what I like about it, while also doing my things, you know, uh, doing my yard and stuff. So, you know, just another standard he side video. Well, remember Queen? Yes, sir. So that's that's it. You know, I'm you Sai. Um, thank you guys for watching, and he Sai. So, and he Sai out. Or well, I don't. Know.